What if you had a car that made its own fuel whenever you needed it? You would never need to gas up again. Dr. Jerry Woodall found a way, accidentally. One day he was experimenting with semiconductors in his lab, melting together two metals, aluminum and gallium. And when I added water to this melt to clean the melt out, I got a big poof of hydrogen and steam coming out of it, and it was uh, quite spectacular and very uh, surprising at that time. Jerry's poof was a very happy accident. Well, I was very excited about it. <laughs> it took me a couple of hours of pondering it in my office to figure out what was going on. He had found a way to make hydrogen on demand. Usually, aluminum has a protective layer created when it comes in contact with oxygen. It forms a skin of aluminum oxide on aluminum, which protects it from further corrosion or reaction with water. But when Jerry added the gallium, it removed the aluminum's protective shield. So now the oxygen and water can react with all the aluminum, freeing the hydrogen instantly. If you have an aluminum gallium alloy and bring it in contact with water, the hydrogen in the water is split off from oxygen to become free hydrogen gas. Jerry uses a little candy to explain his breakthrough. Take, for example, this piece of candy. It's chocolate in the middle and candy on the outside. And if we were to remove the candy from the outside, it becomes pure chocolate and it's very reactive. Just like the chocolate mess, the hydrogen is released and bubbles to the surface. Two, one, and lift off. Of NASA has been using hydrogen fuel in its missions for decades. Trouble is, it's been very expensive to make and highly explosive. The truth of the matter is that people don't like to have large quantities of hydrogen sitting around. With Jerry's alloy, you don't have to worry about turning into a rocket on the highway. We make stuff that is safe to move around and has a high energy content and can be converted into hydrogen when you need it. We'll have to develop an infrastructure that allows us to distribute the fuel to the customer who's going to use this. You'll just buy a tank full of pellets and plug it into your car. So this technology has a, a very good chance of reducing our dependency on foreign oil. And the reason for it is that uh, we are using aluminum, and the aluminum ore is located in places other than the Middle East. Uh, it's located in, in the United States and Oklahoma, for example. So uh, we have a very good chance of reducing our dependency on foreign oil. Jerry expects to be powering golf carts soon and is sure his grandchildren will drive with hydrogen. My dream is to have 100 million cars running on our gallium aluminum alloy in which we add the stuff that's falling on my head from the sky right now, water, the ultimate renewable energy source. The most efficient hydrogen machine on Earth is one we see every day. Each time the sun shines on leaves, they make hydrogen. What if we could make all the hydrogen we need with solar energy? At the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Dr. Daniel Nocera is working on it. I started worrying about energy the day I became a scientist. How much energy we're going to need in the future, being carbon neutral. Turns out that in one hour, more energy hits the surface of the Earth than we use in a year. So there's a lot of energy coming out of the sun that we just aren't doing anything with. Dr. Daniel Nocera is determined to use his skills as a scientist to capture that wasted energy. He hopes he can use sunlight to make hydrogen. So here's our inspiration. It's this tree and it's these leaves on the tree because they're amazing machines. They take sunlight, the sunlight that's hitting them right now, and they're really buzzing with electricity. Inside the leaf, the light of the sun triggers an extraordinary molecular dance, photosynthesis. During this dance, the tight bond between oxygen and hydrogen in the water molecule is broken. Water by itself isn't a fuel, it's just too stable. 
But if the atoms in water change partners and form two molecules of hydrogen and one of oxygen, then we have a very highly energetic fuel. If humans could do what the leaf does, we would have a nearly limitless supply of clean hydrogen to run our cars and power our homes. So we need to get into the lab and do what the plant does. Dan Nocera set out to do that 25 years ago, but decoding nature is rarely simple. After years of experiments, he and his team have come up with a special compound which he believes can split the water molecule. The compound has at its core rhodium, a precious metal from the platinum family. We need to see if this compound works. Does it really, really act on water to make hydrogen and oxygen? So to do that, we actually bring the compound down into this lab. And here we have an artificial sun. Here in the lab, sunlight is provided by a powerful room-sized laser. The experiment begins and everyone watches closely. One of the first things we do is just look for, like Don Ho would say, tiny bubbles. Bubbles would mean that with his laser and special compound, he has created hydrogen. How long was the other one acquiring for? It happens every day in nature. Leaves convert sunlight into fuel. But to accomplish that in the lab would be a small miracle. Their computer and high-speed camera will record the slightest changes. At first, nothing happens. But after a few minutes, something moves. First one bubble, then more. And lo and behold, what you saw is bubbles. We could see the bubbles literally coming out of the solution. Once we see that happening, we then know the system is working. And that's an exciting, exciting event. But then after we analyzed that bubble, we were able to show that indeed it was hydrogen. At that moment, we knew we were onto something. It is a major achievement, but hurdles remain. In this experiment, Dan Nocera did not split a water molecule, which is what the leaf does. Instead, he used hydrochloric acid, which contains one hydrogen and one chlorine molecule. That bond is easier to break than the bond in the water molecule. Also, the rhodium in the special compound is far too expensive for commercial use. So there's no way you can run a large-scale economy based on rhodium. But the experiment brings Dan one step closer to making hydrogen. It's given us the insight to figure out what we need to do now to use cheaper metals, things like iron or nickel, to split water to hydrogen and oxygen. If that is accomplished, we have a new energy ball game for the world. In the new ball game, there is no longer any need for oil. Because now, oil is equivalent to water plus light. So that's the hope. That's why the sun is so interesting to people who are looking for the nirvana, the ultimate answer to the energy problem. In the meantime, it's going to be really important to use lots of technologies to fill in while we try to catch up with nature and do photosynthesis. Coming up, a genetically engineered bacteria creates fuel from stuff you have lying around in your backyard.